Hello, hello, and welcome back to City Skylines with Splat. To roundabout or not to roundabout? That is the question. Am I speaking heresy, or have we discovered some new mystical magic that's going to save my city from the ravages of traffic? In our last episode, we put together this high-density, high-income beachfront residential area along with a touristy slash commercial walking pedestrian area. And this has turned out really, really well. It's been great for getting our population up so that I can finally start building some of the university structures that I want to put in. But when I introduced this area, it did cause a few problems. And one of the problems that it caused is over in Old Town. So let's go take a look over there. So as we move along this road, you will see the problem I'm talking about. We have some serious traffic problems right here leading up to this traffic circle that is right here in the middle of our town. So up here is where we have the original high density area that we built to the north and then uh, our fishing industry comes in from the south and the south uh, also leads over to Old Town and then our national park over there, which is surprisingly busy, also feeds in. Uh, our industry area comes down this road as well and basically this entire intersection has to handle the entire city. Currently it's doing okay except for one direction and so the problem is that the cars going around the roundabout are all going to go continue on to the south. So these cars coming in from the west never have a chance to get on the roundabout. The, uh, the amount of traffic itself is not actually that bad, it's just the way the roundabout's designed, it's not working. I put in these little slip lanes here at one point just to get the people who wanted to turn right uh, off of the roundabout and just let them go, but it's not really doing the job. So what I'm going to do right now is fix this roundabout and turn this into an extremely high capacity intersection that can handle everything that we're going to throw at it. And uh, I know this is going to this is going to bother some people, but the answer is not the roundabout. The answer is the intersection. So uh, how does the old, uh, you know, the old fashioned, shall we say, American intersection beat the, the great mighty European roundabout? Well, let's take a look and see how that's going to work. All right, so I've paused the game. Uh, and let's talk about the problem here. The problem is that these cars coming in from over by our national park area uh, just cannot get on because all the cars that come from the north want to go at, down to the south and they want to continue going on around. So the problem is that there's more people that want to go straight on this intersection than actually want to turn either way. And that's what's clogging up the roundabout. Uh, so what I need to do is figure out a way for all of those people that want to go straight on to be able to do so without clogging up uh, the road system. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab uh, this large water tower. Now, one thing I've done on this map, uh, I did this because they finally fixed the mod. And so it can actually work. So now that the DLC is out is I went ahead and grabbed the mod that allows me to transfer water and uh, power via roads because I kind of got tired of dealing with, uh, I, I just don't like dealing with water pipes and things. It's, it's annoying. I play the game to have fun, not to necessarily be a, a city builder per se. Um, and so I don't necessarily have to worry about pipes anymore. Um, but I'm going to move this water tower over to a new location. And I think I'm just going to put it over here by this cemetery uh, just to get it out of the way. And I know I just said that I don't have to deal with this, but, you know, habits die hard. And in case the mod ever screws up, we're going to go ahead and connect the water tower in to the system. And now we're going to go back to our roundabout here and we're going to delete all this stuff in the middle. So now we have a nice empty area here. I don't know why I can't delete that. Let's try the move it mod. Okay, good old move it mod for the win. Okay. 
So now that I have uh, six lane roads on the tips of these different spurs coming in, I went ahead and drew in some trees just to give myself an eyeball idea of where I want my road to go. Because as we put the trees, as we put the roads in, uh, the trees are gonna get uh, bulldozed anyway. So that's not a problem. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna head over to your vanilla overpass project road set. And the easiest way that I found to find it is just to go to the find it mod and just type in VOP in the top. But if you don't wanna do that, you can also scroll through your different uh, road sizes that you have here and find the one that you want. I just find it's easier here because they're all in one place. You wanna find the kind of road that you're gonna work with. So I am making a two by two by two because basically we're gonna have two lanes on the outsides handling all the turning and two lanes in the middle, they're gonna be handling the straight on traffic. And to do this, you're gonna need to follow the ABC order uh, of these mods. Uh, the guy who put these together has made it nice and easy for us to understand what order things are supposed to get into, so we'll do that. Now, one of the weird things about this mod is that the game doesn't really like what you're doing with the nodes. In fact, it gets really, really confused and really starts to screw things up when you just start dropping these in without any kind of bracing put on. So think about like if you ever tried to work with a roundabout and you have a perfect circle, but then you start adding things to it. Have you ever noticed how the game kind of pushes the nodes out and makes them all wonky? Well, it does a lot of the same stuff here. So with every step of this process, I've discovered it just works better. If I just take a little rule road like this or whatever road you want, and you just come over here and you just, just draw just the absolute smallest little two unit, one unit piece of road off side of each node that you're working with. And if you have the anarchy mod, uh, which is required to even do this process, so you're gonna definitely wanna have anarchy, it's not a problem because you can actually draw roads into buildings and nobody cares. And so we're gonna do that. So this is just bracing so that the game doesn't screw up my nodes as I'm drawing. So now I wanna head back over to the vanilla overpass project. I'm gonna go ahead and check the A222 road. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and just put in a small little bit of road uh, for this. And uh, these do not have to be very big at all, uh, just one or two units, because basically what this is, is this is a um, cosmetic piece of road that's going to uh, split your lanes up once this starts happening. And so uh, don't worry if it looks really weird right now, we're gonna go ahead and fix that in a bit, but just go ahead and just add in just the tiniest little piece of the A road into each of your uh, ends here. So let me do that. And then you wanna make sure that everything is all leveled out, that the game didn't do anything weird with your nodes. Uh, so far, so good. This is probably pointing in a direction it doesn't need to. So let me just use the move it mod here and pull that over. Uh, I'll come back and clean this up in a bit. Okay, and so now that you've got your little cosmetic uh, lane splits put in, now you're ready to move on to the B section. Now the B section is the weird one. And before we do that, we're gonna have to make sure we brace this again. You always wanna brace these things. They're gonna look weird when you brace it, that's okay. We're gonna delete these roads when we're done and it's not gonna look weird anymore, but it is gonna look weird for now. But let's just keep bracing as we go. Now head back over to our vanilla overpass, grab the B one, and this is the one that has a void in the center. And so it's gonna look really weird when you put it down, but that's okay, weird is just perfectly fine. And this one, you're gonna wanna draw uh, out to, not all the way to where your intersection is going to be, uh, but I find that if you bring it in about, I don't know, six to 10 units in from the end, uh, that's a good place to go. And don't worry about it too much because we can always use the move it mod to kind of uh, squish this stuff around a little bit anyway. But it's gonna look really weird because there's absolutely nothing in the middle. It's supposed to look like that. Don't worry about these little gaps and all this stuff back here. We'll fix that later. So uh, we're just gonna bring that out. Make sure that I'm kind of lined. I wanna make sure that I'm lined up a bit here. Again, we're gonna move it mod this stuff. This is not an exact science by any stretch. Uh, I'm just trying to make it roughly the same distance from the intersection all the way around. Now this one's gonna be really weird because this uh, road kind of looks odd when you use the elevated one, but I've got a train track that comes through here. So I'm gonna have to do some really goofy stuff to make it look nice. And in the end, we are just gonna have to put up with the fact that it kind of looks silly. And there's not much I can do about it because this is the way this works. Uh, it's. it's like I said, this is what it's gonna look like. There's not much I can do about that. We'll see if we can hide some of the odd cosmetics later. All right, so I've brought those all in. Now we're gonna brace again, because we always brace just to make sure that our road nodes don't get messed up. 
And now you want to go back and this time you're going to choose the type of road that you want to have for your overpass slash underpass. So this design, because of this railroad track, uh, the road that goes north and south, the cars that want to go straight are going to pass over the intersection. And the cars on this one that want to go east and west, I'm going to actually have them passing under the intersection. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my two lane uh, vanilla overpass. I want to make sure that I select the elevated one. I also want to make sure that these intersections are all the same height. So I'm going to go, so we're just going to do a quick control H and just make sure everything is the same here. And I'm going to grab that. I'm going to make sure I got the elevated one and I'm going to come back here where uh, the void begins. I'm just going to start drawing in a little bit of a road and I'm going to bring it out past the end of this node right here. I want to make sure that it's not going to grab that node. I want to come out here and I'm going to use my little page up to figure out, you know, how exactly I want this thing to look. And I'm just going to drop it in. Uh, it looks really weird back here. I'll come back with the move it mod and fix all this later. But for now, I just want to get these drawn in. So these are the two that are going over. So I'm going to draw in my I wrote here out past just a little bit and we're going to go page up, page up, page, page up, page up, page up. And just bring it up and we're going to put it in. And so as you can see, the road begins to rise up and you can kind of guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to connect those together, but I'm not going to connect those together using the uh, elevated one. I'm going to do the force bridge because the elevated one has these little uh, concrete walls that actually hide the void here, uh, but you don't need those uh, when you're actually going over the intersection. You can just use the force bridge, which gives you a empty one, which gives you a place for the road to come through. So I still don't know how tall I want this to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and go ahead here and do a control H just to make sure those are the same height. I'm going to come back through and fix all of this later. But for now, we're ready to continue on. So the, you, this is going to go over the intersection and this one here is going to go under. So I grab my two lane uh, road thingy here and I go back to using uh, the uh, elevated piece and I draw, but instead of instead of drawing and pushing page up or page up, I'm gonna push page down and force a tunnel. And I think I might even use the force tunnel button here. Yeah, we're just gonna force a tunnel. We're gonna page down a bit and drop that in. We are gonna have to come back and move it, mod this all over the place. We're gonna come back here where this begins. We're gonna uh, force a tunnel. We're gonna go down. You know, there may be better ways to do this and somebody might have a more con efficient way of handling this, but this is how I do it. And so now I've got this really weird looking uh, intersection. And so I got to come back through here with my move it mod and I just got to grab using the tunnel view. I just got to grab some nodes here and we're just going to age that down to where it looks nice. Something like that. So now that I've got my tunnels put in, my overpasses put in, sorry for the cut, I uh, deleted something and had to redo this area back here, but I followed the same basic principles. I'm ready now to connect everything together. So I just take the C section here, which is the uh, two by two by two, which is kind of the finishing touch. And once everything's braced, all I have to do is go through here and just connect everything together and then go through and delete all the bracing. And then it's just a matter of using the move it mod to kind of squish and smash everything where I want it to go. And I'm also going to be using a few other tools to get rid of excess nodes that I don't need or add nodes in places that I need them. But basically, this is the general idea of what I just made. Um, I'm going to come through and add in a few things to make this look a little less horrible, but um, the cars coming this way are going to go down the tunnel and they're going to come up here if they want to go straight. The cars here are going to go up the ramp and over the top if they want to go straight. So now let's make it look beautiful. So the first thing we need to do is we need to come back in here and we got to squish this thing together so that uh, it doesn't have uh, such it doesn't have the repeating pattern anymore. So I'm just going to grab one of these nodes and I'm just going to I'm going to grab the node. I'm just going to smush it up in here. But it's just one segment long. I'm just going to straighten things out a little bit to get rid of the gaps. Uh, I'm going to go through and straighten out this tunnel so it doesn't go off to the side, which is what it's currently doing. And we're going to slide some more things around to start straightening things up. Uh, this road here, this tunnel needs to be pulled forward quite a bit because I want to make sure that I'm covering up that um, void right here. And so to do that, I just compressed uh, way too many nodes together. So I'm going to go into my network multi-tool and I'm going to hit the 
remove node button. I'm gonna hit shift to go underground and I got these two nodes that I just squished together that I don't need one of them. So I'm just gonna delete that node. I'm gonna go back to the move it mod, go back underground and continue uh, squishing things together until they all line up. All right, so after much fiddling and moving, uh, I think the tunnels look okay. It's not the greatest thing in the world, and I probably wanna take the six lane road back another node uh, just to give them room to actually move in, but I, I think it looks okay for now. If I wanna be really persnickety about it, I'll come back and do more later. And now I gotta fix the overpass. So let me get onto that and make sure I can make this look a little bit nicer and we'll see what it looks like. Uh, to fix this thing, I'm gonna try changing the force bridge just to elevate for this node and see if that looks any better. I think it does. Nope. Ooh, I broke something. So after a bunch of wiggling and finagling, I finally got everything put in the way I want it. I did run the game a little bit just so I could get an idea of how high this overpass should be for the traffic going back and forth. And I know that these two tunnels are not symmetrical, but I don't really care because uh, I'm just not that picky and I'm happy with the way it looks. So now what we have to do is set up all the lanes and the turning and everything so that the game actually understands how this thing works and make sure that it's actually using it properly. And we're going to use that using uh, Traffic Manager Presidential Edition TMPE, and we're going to come in here and we're gonna select the lane connector tool. And what we need to do is go into where each of these intersections are and that one has not been moved yet, so let me... All right, so we grab the lane connector tool and we click here and I wanna make sure that the people in the right lane keep going forward, so I just push up. I wanna, oh, don't wanna connect that. Make sure that this lane keeps going that way. Make sure that this lane keeps going that way. And then the people going back the other direction, make sure that they continue on as well. And then we're gonna go over to this node here and just make sure that everything is fine, that there's no hanky-panky weird lane changing going on. Uh, you could also do this automatically, but I'm just doing it manually so you can see how that goes. And you just go around to each of these intersections and you do the same thing. Uh, just as a little tip, when you're doing this, you can actually come in here and instead of doing it manually one by one, you can just click on the node that you want to mess with and hit Control S and it will automatically set the lanes up for you as well. That'll just save you a little bit of time as you're going around doing that. Okay, so we've got all those set up the way that they're supposed to be and now we need to come in here and look at this intersection. And as you can see, cars are turning left like they're supposed to, but they're running into each other, which is bad. There's not enough room in this intersection for us to have all of our wonderful magic happening. Well, we can fix that by coming up here to the node controller, Renew, and all we have to do is just make the intersection bigger and give the cars more space to turn. And so that's just a matter of just grabbing these and pulling them back and make them nice and straight. And that is going to give all the cars all the space they need to uh, turn in the intersection. All right, last but not least, we're gonna come in here with our lane connector as well and just make sure that everybody is going where they're supposed to go. So this lane right here is going to turn into the near lane and this left turn is going to left turn into the near lane over there. Go to the next one. This one is going to turn here and this one is going to turn left into that near lane over there. Rotate around, do it again. As you can see, everything is gonna be exactly the same. I think this intersection is good to go and we should go from this big long line of traffic back here that was struggling at the roundabout uh, all the way to this thing just completely uh, clearing up. I'm just gonna make this intersection a bit bigger so that the cars uh, can get into the six lane easier. Do I need to do that anywhere else? No, that's at an intersection. Uh, this one, I did say that I wanted to move this farther back, which I'm going to do, just to give them a little more space to figure out what in the world they're doing. But I'm gonna make that intersection a tad bigger so it's not so hard for the AI to figure out how to get through there. All right, and I think I wanna turn this thing on full speed speed and let's just see how well it can handle uh, the traffic in my city. I think we're doing just fine. 
All right, so the intersection is installed and it looks like it's working perfectly. I did do a little bit of work on the intersection just to add some pavement and grass in the places where the cars aren't supposed to drive. But uh, other than that, I didn't really do a whole lot to it. And I really, really like the way it has turned out. The traffic is completely gone in the back. Uh, everybody's going through very quickly and the traffic in my city has improved significantly. So all I have to do now is go in and just redecorate this a little bit with some trees and things just to make up for some of the uh, demolishing I did when I originally put the intersection in and yeah I really like this I think it's great so now that we're done with this intersection we've got our traffic problems figured out I think it is time for us to move on to installing our university and so that's what I'm gonna look at doing next and I'm really excited because I love the university assets in this game and they're just so much fun to decorate with and I really like the idea of taking the uh, university assets and see if we can combine them with some of the new stuff that we got with the DLC that came out. That's what we're gonna look at doing next. I want to put my university district over here by the river on the left side of the screen across the way from my uh, nature preserve. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and line this river with a beautiful campus area and maybe across the highway, uh, put some up into this mountain area and just kind of give it a nice picturesque look. Uh, eventually this whole area over here in this little nook and cranny, this down here, it's all going to become housing so we can get our population up higher and get our way up to Mega Megalopolis or whatever it's called so we can unlock uh, all of the squares on the map. Now the university that I want to use is this one right here, which is the university campus. I'm not going to use the liberal arts or the trade school. Uh, this is the one that I want to go with this time around because I, I like the color scheme and it actually matches really well with some of the assets that came with the pedestrian. DLC and I want to use those to make it prettier. Unfortunately, I haven't figured out a way yet to include campuses into the pedestrians DLC because DLC requires you to zone things a certain way and you can't share zones, which is unfortunate, but perhaps there's a way to do it. I just haven't figured it out. Now, the reason these are unlocked is because while I was putting in our overpass underpass over there, I actually just dropped a bunch of assets in over here into this field uh, for the university and just let the student body numbers go up and the beautification and all that stuff so that I could unlock a bunch of stuff because I want to be able to design this university uh, exactly in the way that I want. So to do that, we're going to pause the game and we are going to put a seawall or a key wall in along this river to straighten this out uh, so that when we put our university in, it looks nice and orderly. So we're going to go in here to our water and we have several different key wall assets that I've downloaded in addition to the ones that came with a content creator pack a while back. Um, and there's one in here that I want to give a try to and it's this one right here. These just the the, st the plain old stone uh, key wall. No uh, trees or anything. Um, I don't want to do that. And so let's just see if we can stretch this thing along the river and make this look nice. Uh, it's going to cause all kinds of flooding. Uh, you just have to accept that as a fact, but uh, not much I can do about it. So we're just going to go ahead and drop this in like so. And that put in a key wall just like that. I want to let the game run a little bit to see how the water uh, runs up against this wall in case I need to do any uh, scooching around with the move it mod. Okay, so surprisingly that wasn't too bad. We can go ahead and continue on putting in the rest of our areas. I'm going to pause the game again. And now we're going to start pulling down some roads and things. So because this is going to be a beautiful university area, we are definitely going to be using some tree lined roads. And I want to use these right here, the uh, two lane avenue with trees, or do I want to go with the two lane road? Nope, we're not going to go the medium. We're going to go with the two lane avenue with trees and parking, which I like a lot. And I'm going to go ahead and just draw one in for now, because what I want to do is grab the university. What's it called? The first building that you need to get things started, the administration building. So this is what you need to start a university. So I'm going to pop that in and then we're going to go through here and we're going to put in a university district uh, starting at this point. It's going to cover all of this. 
district is put in and now we're going to move some things around and kind of decide where we want to put this. The idea is I want this building to be seen as people come up here and they get a chance to see uh, the beautiful administrative building as they come up the roundabouts. So we're going to go like that and then we're going to grab that and we're just going to page down a little bit. I wonder if I need to level out all this terrain so I don't have to deal with all of that. Let me take a look at the terrain really. I'm just going to stick that out of the way. Take these. We're going to move these out of the way. You get over there. All right, let me take a look at the terrain and see if we need to level things out. I bet we do. Yes, we do need to do a little bit of leveling. Uh, actually, not much. I just need to move that farther back up here to get that to work. Unless I can get away with pushing this terrain down a little bit without it looking too weird. Let's try that. And yeah, I think we can get away with that. We can probably bring that up just a hair to get rid of that terrain line and we can bring that up just a hair all right looking good okay so as people come down this road they're going to be driving along here and they're going to see this beautiful structure announcing that basically with all of its uh, weird graphical glitches uh, announcing that the university has arrived cool all right what else do we have in here that we're going to have to install there is one more very large building okay so i got the school of law that looks like this and I have the School of Medicine that looks like this. The School of Law matches that kind of the beige colored, uh, with the beige, with the beige colored uh, limestone. No, the beige colored marble, I think it is. And I want to put that so that it looks beautiful from across the river. But I think I still want it facing, still want it facing the, uh, do I want it facing this way? Or do I want it facing the, I want it facing the road. And I think we're just going to bring that down here and use that as kind of a backstop to the rest of the street structure like that and we'll put a road in front of it that looks horrible let's move that around just a touch that'll work and now it's just a matter of putting in more roads and filling this all in so let me do that and we'll get back and see what we got I've got the road network all put in, and now I am ready to start dropping some different buildings in. Uh, this road network is just a very basic one. I plan on using a lot of walking paths in this area to get people around and about. And so uh, we're gonna start off by putting in some dormitories, and I think I wanna do that uh, away from these main study structures and kind of put them over here in this section. And I wanna put a walking path that goes all along the waterfront here. Now, this is already going to be a disaster, I can tell, because of the way the game handles this stuff. But we're going to give it a shot and we're going to use the move it mod uh, as we need to uh, to try to get this to actually fit in. I can already tell that this is looking horrible and there's not really much I can do about it right now. But let's get the whole path put in and let's go back and do a little bit of move it mod uh, magic and see if we can't make this pathway look a little better once we get it installed. And I want it to run all the way down and then plug in right there. And then we're just going to move and we're going to scoot everything over so that it's right next to the waterfront. And then I'm going to come back with my uh, terrain tools and see if I can't uh, fix some of that stuff that's sticking out into the river. Or we might even get lucky and discover that the stuff sticking out in the river doesn't actually look that bad once I get the water flowing and we just don't notice it anymore. Um, it's possible. I highly doubt it, but we might get lucky and that might be the case. So let's just see what we can do to make this look beautiful because that's what we want. Okay, change of plans. I went ahead and just made the whole pathway an elevated section, and that seems to have fixed some of the clipping problems that we were having before. Uh, if I want people to be able to get off of the path, I'll just have to draw some little uh, walkways that come off uh, either way from the side, but that's doable. We can definitely deal with that, and I think that's going to work out just fine. It looks a whole lot better up against uh, this uh, key wall doing it this way, so I think that's the route we're going to take. Dormitories. Dormitories are going to go against the waterfront. There we go. I wanted to make a little university block that would fit in here, and I think that's going to work quite well. We'll just bring this pathway around and finish that off and just bring it in like that. 
and we might have to move this road a little bit, but you know what? That's the beauty of this game. We can make changes as we go. I like it. We'll come back in and put some, uh, we'll put in some trees and things and make that look beautiful a little bit later. Next thing we're gonna have to do is decide on where we wanna put more of these university, uh, the more of these dormitories. I'm thinking I actually want to have a couple sets of these things, but I'm going to put the other one over here because I want to have green space uh, in this area. One of the things that I've been trying to learn how to do better is building with green space and not necessarily having this feeling that I must fill up every single complete and total space of my city with a structure of some sort because you don't have to and sometimes it just looks nicer when you don't do that and you leave green space so that you can put in trees vegetation parks you can put in your own assets and props to make it look nice and that is the thing that i'm challenging myself with a little bit with the build this time around is being uh less heavy on just really overfilling things and spending a little more time worrying about the green space and detailing in. So I have a couple of dormitories put in. What other structures do we have? We have the university study hall, that is quite large. We've got the groundskeeper, which is smaller, and I can definitely put that in on a road around here, or even sneak this in back off of the side and let that groundskeeper be out of the way. We've got the uh, futsal club. I have no idea what futsal is, but apparently uh, I did not go to a rich enough university to know how that works. There's the study hall, which is enormous. Study hall's gonna, the study space is gonna go over here. I have some plans for this area to turn it into something really cool. We have the gymnasium, which I think should also be over here. Uh, the gymnasium, I like the idea of maybe putting it uh, between the dormitories for the students to use. Uh, cafeteria is gonna have to be close, maybe in this area over here. So let's start putting stuff in. I do know that I wanna put the study area in this section here. And I'm kind of just eyeballing it, doing a little bit of an organic build because I have plans for turning this area into kind of a plaza thing. I don't know if we have any other smaller structures that would fit in here. We have some fountains and things that we could try using. I do like the university uh, fountains. And what I like about the university fountains is that you can, uh, you can actually uh, tile these. Uh, I, I am definitely eyeballing this as I go. So this is what I'm talking about, how I really like these fountain assets because you can tile them together and uh, turn them into something really, really attractive with the double fountains next to the building. I've got a bunch of other buildings I'm gonna put in. Let me go through and put this all together and get just the basic structures put down and then I'll give you guys a little bit more insight into what I was planning on doing with the actual decoration of the props uh, and some of the unique things that I wanna put in that don't necessarily come with the university pack. So let me go ahead and put the rest of the buildings in and I'll come back and show you what we're up to. I've got the basic structures put in. Uh, I didn't put everything in because some of it's gonna go on the other side of the highway, but now I wanna introduce you to a little bit to what I'm planning on doing with some of the decorations. I really like some of the stuff that came out with the new content creator pack. So I'm gonna hop over here to the props that came with the pedestrian areas, and I wanna look at some of these tiles here because some of these tiles actually match in really well with the design of this university. So like here's the university, like we go with these tiles here they, they kind of match pretty well i can't exactly get the same effect i could use like a surface tool and just do pavement as well but i really like the idea of, of whatever i decide to do i like the idea of using some of these new modern sculptures and fountains and stuff to uh, make this look really really cool so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put in like a little uh plaza area here with some food trucks and things uh just to kind of show that this is where the the students could come hang out so let's see what happens there.
I have to admit that this is actually taking a really long time to get all this detailed in, but I'm enjoying it quite a bit. So let me give you just a little view of what we're doing so far. I've taken some of the assets that came with the new uh, DLC and I've incorporated those into the university structure with some landscaping around them. We put like a little uh, food area in plaza uh, in the center of the university that people can come in and sit and enjoy a snack. We went ahead and added in a little decorative uh, fountain walkway over here with some places for people to sit and enjoy uh, some shade and uh, I kind of envision this as like just a big grassy plaza where people can come in and lay down in the grass, throw a frisbee, whatever they want to do and enjoy that there. Over here we went ahead and put in some more modern art and uh, put a fence and some other things around it just to kind of decorate that in. And then we went around to the front of the building where we've put in some of these plazas as well to decorate the front of the university. And we'll go in and put some fencing in and things around there later. Uh, these sunken plazas are a are on the workshop. They're just called sunken plaza. I love these things. They look absolutely amazing. And I put in a couple of these here as well. And then we've got the statue plaza from the university, which I'm going to decorate out with some trees and things as well. But it kind of goes along with my theme where I'm not necessarily trying to put like hyper-functional buildings in, but I'm trying to use green space to give an organic feel to this university. So it's not quite as clustered and claustrophobic as some of them might be. I'm gonna go ahead and go through and finish out the rest of this area and put in a few parking lots and different things that we would need for the university. I believe a parking lot will probably go back in this area here, a small one. Uh, I'm thinking we're gonna have a parking lot here in front of the big uh, school of law. And then there's gonna be some parking for the students who use the dormitories as well to fill that in. And then over here, we'll probably put the uh, maintenance building in things like that. So let me get started on that. Uh, we'll uh, show you what it looks like when we come back, but I really like the way this is coming along so far.
the main body of our university is all finished, and I am really happy with this. It took a long time to detail all this out, but I had so much fun doing it. Let me give you a little tour of the place, if I can. As you first drive up to the university, you're going to see some beautiful gardens out front of the administrative building, giving a nice, imposing uh, high view of the surrounding area. And if you continue on around, you'll see to the side we have some theater areas where they can have their performances and lectures. There is an information building at the front and a check-in for people coming into the university where you will find some common areas where there are tennis courts to enjoy a nice relaxing time. There is a lawn area for people to come out and enjoy the sunshine and relax and study. There is a community uh, food area for people to come and just enjoy as well as a study park. Across the street you have some cafeterias uh, where people can come in to enjoy meals at the university for the students there. You have a university store uh, that also fronts the road that can be seen from the highway as you come in, where the students can go in to buy whatever paraphernalia they need. Uh, following along the way, we have uh, the School of Law, the prestigious university where the, only the finest minds can graduate, uh, surrounded by some beautiful fountain sculptures and plazas, and moving on towards the school dormitory areas and some of the other facilities for them there. Here you can see where the students have the opportunity to relax out front in a nice, gorgeous, landscaped area that is butting up against a beautiful view of the river, and if you follow on down here, you will see where there's a more recreational area with basketball courts, uh, some areas for cookouts and barbecues and just to enjoy the scenery of the beautiful uh, nature reserve across the way and into the maintenance area where the uh, maintenance workers uh, who keep this place so beautiful can continue to work. And this was all, uh, besides this one building here, everything here was just hand detailed in with these buildings and structures. And the wonderful tour of our university area ends at this beautiful landscaped logo of the St. splatouge sur -Mai University. This was a lot of fun to put in, that is for sure. We still have some building that we need to do to our university, and I'm looking at this hill across the highway. We are going to be adding in a few more structures over here to finish things up. And then last but not least, uh, since we have this university now, I have decided we need to get some inner city traffic going. And so we're probably going to install an inner city bus terminal for you students who want to come in and study, as well as servicing the university with a train station for, for students who want to come in from out of town as well. I have already gone through through the efforts to install a train station over here. This is one of the new raised platform uh, assets that came with the, uh, with the new DLC the plazas and promenades. I like this a lot and I, I'm a big fan of, of raised platform train stations. And so this station here is going to serve this side of the city and people will be able to use that to travel all the way across town over here as well as get some inner city stuff going. So let me go ahead and install the stuff that I want to put across the highway and I'll come back and show you what we got. I have completed the university at St. Splatouge sur May, and I am very happy with how it turned out. I think this whole project, all in all, took me about seven hours to complete, but it's okay because you just, you know, you put a podcast on or listen to an audiobook while you go, and you just let the creativity flow and have some fun. And that's really what this game is all about, is just doing uh, beautiful things that come natural and just doing what makes you happy. And this is what I really enjoy, is doing these kind of detailed builds. I hope you guys enjoy uh, when I focus on an area and try to put a little more detail into it. I know some people get big into the, the massive expansions that happen and take up a lot of space and add population, but this is what I play the game for. 
and I really enjoy doing this kind of stuff. So let me go ahead and give you a tour of the new addition across the highway. Over here, we have the medical center where people can learn how to be medically centered people, whatever that might be. Uh, we've got a couple of dormitories for people to stay in. We have some bookstores, a cafeteria, a chess club, some other things down here just to kind of fill in that area in front. And then over here, I decided to do something kind of crazy and I put in this lake, which I haven't decided if I like it or not yet. It does look a little odd, but it's something different. You know, that's what this game's all about. I'm trying something new. And I went ahead and put the commencement area up here. And it looks like we're actually having a commencement right now. So congratulations, guys. You get to graduate. Yay for you. And I just like the way it looks when you're coming in off of the highway over here. You just get that sense of height and the water. And it gives it a little bit more depth, I think. There's just a little bit more character to what's going on here when things are a little bit higher. I really struggle with building on a slope and building with hills. It's something I'm trying really hard to get better at. Um, and so I decided to challenge myself a little bit by doing a tiered university. Uh, normally what I do is I tend to kind of flatten everything out and work on it like I did over here. It just makes it easier for me. But this game is all about having fun. It's all about doing great things and challenging yourself. And so that is what I did. I hope you guys like it. I hope it uh, inspired maybe some people to try some different things. Please leave a comment down below if you have any questions about any of the assets I used or if you have any questions about any of the techniques I used to get some of these details in. I am going to do some YouTube shorts, I think, uh, talking a little bit about some of the just the finicky little techniques you can use with pathways and the uh, surface painter tool and different things like that to get things to work the way you want. Um, if there's anything you guys want to know more about any mods or assets, please drop a comment below and I will address it uh, either in a reply or I, mean, I might even make a video if you're asking for like a how to and how to do something. The only thing we have left to do is to drop in a quick train station and I think we're going to be done with this new development. So let's get busy on the train station right now. So the passenger train station that's going to serve our university and this side of town is just going to come off. I'm just going to pull a spur off the rail here and bend it down towards this residential area because eventually this is all going to get filled up with housing uh, in a later video. So let me just pull a little spur down here to give the trains a place to go. We'll drop in our station and call it a wrap. Nothing fancy for now. We just dropped a train station in. I used one of the content creator packs that they released a little while ago. I like this little island train station. And of course I used the Bob tree replacer to change up some of the assets a while back And I have created a train line that just goes back and forth between the other Gee, what in the... Uh, oh, uh -huh. You do that too, you do that too, oh look! That's cool. We've got like a little like a uh, curvy roller coaster thing here. Gonna have to fix that. Okay, but I've just created a train line that goes back and forth, taking people from this side of town over here to the other side of town where I've got the train station. So that's going to do it for the city of St. Splatouche sur May. I know I'm still pronouncing that wrong, but thank you all for being very patient with my bad pronunciations as I do my best. We did manage to accomplish a lot today. We put in this wonderful overpass underpass that's going to help our traffic congestion immensely. Yes, we did away with the roundabout, but we put something better in. We managed to install a couple of train stations, which are also going to help get people off the streets as they move back and forth between sides of town, but also allowing some inner city trains to come in for people from outside to visit and give us a boost in our tourism. And last but surely not least, we decorated out this amazing university build to give the people of our city a place to pursue higher education. If they're not the smartest people in the world, well, it's no longer my fault. They have everything that they need and I believe that it is absolutely gorgeous. I really appreciate everybody who's still watching at this point. I'm glad that you enjoyed what you saw. Please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button if you really liked it. And if you have any questions about any of the mods or assets that I used today, leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to help you out and answer those. I might make a video or I might just answer in the comments. We'll see. Depends on what kind of questions you ask. Thank you once again everybody for watching and until next time, I'll catch you later.